the Temple of Time, one of the most important places in Hyrule. However, in Twilight Princess, it's a bit weird. It's huge and very different from the ones seen in Ocarina of Time. So let's find out what happened to it and why it's so different. Now last week on Friday, I was streaming on Twitch as usual. We were going through the Temple of Time in Twilight Princess and we all noticed something. Like they talked about the old messenger from the sky. Wait, I'm... Kotlol, help me remember this. Help. This. This looks like the ancient messengers um, who talk with the Aku. Then this must be an Aku-inspired temple, right? Help me remember to look into this. This is interesting. Now it's captivating me. So why do we see these cloaked beings on the wall? And why do they have the Dominion Rod? Is there a connection between the two? And also, another thing I saw in the temple was the medallion of light on the floor in a lot of places, which was also new. They were seen in other versions of the temple as well, but not as much as in this one. And besides that, the temple looks completely different. So let's start out by taking a look at the Temple of Time from Ocarina of Time, since that's the last time we saw it, before it became like the one in Twilight Princess. Many years after the events of Skyward Sword, there was an era of chaos with wars and fighting over the Triforce that was located in the Sacred Realm. To put an end to these wars, an ancient sage named Raru built over the remains of the sealed temple a new Temple of Time, which contained the only entrance to the Sacred Realm, using the Master Sword and the three spiritual stones as keys. This new temple was the sanctified gateway between Hyrule and the Sacred Realm, and its purpose was to protect that gateway, and thus the Triforce from evildoers who would seek to misuse it. So that was its original use, but if we look at the one in Twilight Princess, then we can see that things changed. A lot. The Master Sword used to be in the temple. Once we enter it, we can see that it's up until that point still very similar to the one from Ocarina of Time. But even the writing at the beginning of the temple mentions the Dominion Rod, so they incorporated it in the whole dungeon, not only the new parts. Now if we look at the rest of the dungeon, then we can clearly see that the second part was added later, since originally stairs wouldn't have appeared if you put the Master Sword in its pedestal. Now this is where it really starts to get interesting. Why did they build this extra section to the temple? Well the carvings on the wall show what looks like the sages, or monks at least, with the Dominion Rod. And this item can also be found inside of the dungeon, and I think that's one of the reasons why they built this extension. Back when the Oka still maintained contact with the royal family, they handed down the Dominion Rod, also known as the Rod of the Heavens. This rod was only carried by one known as the messenger to the heavens, and it would be used by that person whenever the royal family needed to communicate with the Oka. Along with the Dominion Rod, the Oka left the ancient skybook with the Sheikah, which was to be given specifically to the heavenly messenger. So this part of the Temple of Time was most likely built around that time period when the Oka and the Hylians made contact. But why would they build such a huge and elaborate place for one artifact? The temple for the Master Sword wasn't even this big. Well that's the weird part. And the Mirror of Twilight Shard wasn't there originally as well. It's only there because of Zand, so they didn't build the extension for that. And that point also creates a whole new question. How did Zend get the shard inside of the Temple of Time? We went through some crazy time travel portal after all, which you can only access with the Master Sword. Well, let's first look why they built this extension. There are only two things that make sense here. The first one is that the Aku and the Hylians made it to safely store the Dominion Rod, and the other is that they made it to test the hero as well. Now the first one seems logical, but like I mentioned before, the dungeon is way too big for this. Way too big to guard only one artifact. But what about the second option? A place to store the Dominion Rod and also to test the hero's skill. Well, the Tower of the Gods from the Wind Waker has many similarities to this dungeon, such as both being towers, similar music, statues which can be controlled, numerous Beemos and Armos, a Dark Nut mini-boss, and a room in each temple with a balance skill that requires the weight of statues to manipulate. Could it be that they added this part to the temple to test the new user of the Master Sword? A bit like the Tower of the Gods. That one was used to test people as well, and as soon as they made it, they were worthy enough to go to Hyrule and get the Master Sword. It was built by the goddesses and used by them, which is also very fitting, since this section of the Temple of Time was probably built after they came into contact with the Oka. 
And according to Shad, the Oka are the closest race to the gods, closer even than Hylians, whose land Hyrule was founded by the Oka. After the goddesses created the Hylians, the Oka simultaneously formed their own city, a city that floats in the heavens, which can only be reached via Sky Cannon. So could it be that the Oka, Hylians and the goddesses created this extra section for the same reason they built the Tower of the Gods, as a test? Since you can already see that the place is a death trap, it was never designed to be a place to study or anything else. But why can you still get to this section of the Temple of Time? Why does this door bring you to the past? Well, most likely for the Dominion Rod, since it was left there. But why didn't they move it then? The place is completely in ruins, and the only way you can get in is by using the Master Sword, which can only be used by the hero, so any future sages can only get in by asking the hero to do it. Well, maybe they kept it there for other reasons. Maybe this isn't the Temple of Time at all, but actually the Temple of Light. Just look at it, the place is completely different from the Ocarina of Time version. Even the spiritual stones and the door of time are gone. But that could have been changed over time. If you look at the door at the entrance and translate the text on it, then it reads Time Door. So they could have easily redesigned it at some point. Who knows? But the extra section that they added would have been really hard to put in, because the circumstances weren't great. In this timeline, they ended up in a war. The Hylians and their allies versus Ganondorf and the Gerudo. Where did they get the resources and time to build something like this? If they build it during the war, then Ganondorf would certainly attack it. So might it be that the extra section is actually a part of the Temple of Light? The only part of it that we have ever seen is the Chamber of Sages, so anything is possible. And in Ocarina of Time, we access this place by pulling the Master Sword from the pedestal, so maybe that also worked in Twilight Princess, but this time we had to put it inside the pedestal, and stairs would appear to the entrance of the Temple of Light. It transports you to the dungeon, but maybe it doesn't do that, but actually takes you to the Temple of Light. The place is filled with the logo of the Light Medallion, which is already quite a big hint. I can't be sure about this, of course, but there are a ton of things pointing towards it, and even the Aku stuff makes sense to a degree. They are close with the gods and helped out with building the Kingdom of Hyrule, so maybe they also help with the Temple of Light. Now besides all of this, how did Zend get the Mirror of Twilight there? If this is really the Temple of Light, then the defenses would be amazing. No one should be able to get in without the right stuff. Well, we have seen in the game that Zend can travel between the world of Twilight and the normal light world. So maybe he can also get to other places like the past using time travel or to the realm of the Temple of Light. However, I'm not really sure if he can do that, but he would probably have enough power to do it if he knows how to, since he also gets power from Ganondorf. Now another option is that it got there by accident, since if we look at the other Twilight Mirror Shard locations, then we can see that it's a bit random where they ended up. Overall, they end up in isolated or hard to reach locations. So maybe he just teleported them to each corner of the world and left it there. So that could explain how it ended up in the Temple of Time dungeon. He just sent it somewhere in that direction. Now, of course, he also put a curse on it, and that's why there are so many monsters in the temple. The same happened to Snow Peak. So as you can see, the Temple of Time dungeon from Twilight Princess has quite a lot of secrets. It's a mysterious place. Compared to the one from Ocarina of Time, it changed a lot to say the least. And not a lot is explained. But now, we at least have an idea of what could have happened. And who knows what Nintendo will reveal about it in the future. Hey there, be sure to check out all my other social media. If you don't do it, I'll be very sad. We do so many fun stuff there and you don't want to be a part of it. Makes me sad. Thanks for watching everybody, I hope you enjoyed. If you want to watch more videos, click the annotations on the screen right now. And if you aren't subscribed yet, then what are you doing?